So far, you've done some wonderful work with measuring. You know how to find the perimeter or the length around a shape. You also know how to find the area of shapes or the amount of space in the shape. Well, here's an interesting question. Do you think shapes that have the same perimeter would also have the same area? Let's explore this thought. We already learned about area by looking at square units. Remember that each square unit has the side length of one unit. And so this square unit has the area of one squared unit, but it has the perimeter of four units. So if one square unit has a perimeter of four units, does that mean that a shape with two square units has a perimeter of eight units? There's only one way to find out. Counting the sides, the perimeter of this shape is six units. Oh, how interesting. Let's continue exploring. Let's look at shapes that have an area of four square units. Now here are two shapes that both have an area of four square units. But what is the perimeter of each of these shapes? Let's count the sides and find out. Look at that. Even though some shapes may have the same area, that does not mean that they automatically have the same perimeter. Well, let's find the area and perimeter of other shapes and explore this even more. Find the area and perimeter of each shape. Do any of the shapes have the same perimeter or area? Okay, we can start by finding the area of each of these shapes. And we do that by counting the unit squares. The first shape has an area of 8 square units. And the next shape has an area of 7 square units. The final shape, oh, that's interesting, also has an area of 7 square units. We already found out that two shapes have the same area of 7 square units. Now let's find out if any of our shapes have the same perimeter. The first shape has a perimeter of 12 units. The next shape has a perimeter of 14 units, and the final shape has a perimeter of 12 units. Well, look at that. Two of the shapes have the same perimeter, but not the same area. The two shapes that you found earlier that had the same area don't have the same perimeter. That's super interesting. What a great discovery you made. Let's practice with a few more problems and see if we can make even more discoveries. Okay, so Sally has two possible gardens that she could fence in. Both have the same perimeter. Uh, let's just start by finding the perimeter of each of these rectangles to make sure it's the same. We want to add up the side lengths. Let's start with garden A. 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 equals 20. Okay, now let's look at garden B. 6 plus 4 plus 6 plus 4 is equal to 20. Sally has 20 feet of fencing. Now we can find the area of each of the possible gardens. Since both of the gardens are rectangles, we can find the area by multiplying the width and the length. Let's again start with garden A. The width is 5 feet and the length is also 5 feet. And 5 multiplied by 5 is 25. So garden A will have an area of 25 square feet. Now, let's look at garden B. The width is 6 feet, and the length is 4 feet. 6 multiplied by 4 is 24. Huh, garden B has an area of 24 square feet. So looking at the two options, Sally would have a larger garden area if she chooses garden A. Great work. Let's do another problem. Here we go. Jack is framing two windows in his house. Find the area and the perimeter of both windows. Well, let's start by finding the perimeter of window number one. Four plus four plus four plus four equals 16. Window number one has a perimeter of 16 feet. Now, let's do window number two. Eight plus two plus eight plus two equals 20. Window number two has a perimeter of 20 feet. Now we can find the area. Let's use multiplication to find the area of window number one. 
4 multiplied by 4 is 16. And so this window has an area of 16 square feet. Moving on to number 2. 8 multiplied by 2 is 16. This window also has an area of 16 square feet. Look at that. Both windows have the same area. And window number 1 actually has both the same perimeter and area. How interesting. One more problem. Walter is remodeling his backyard. His backyard can be different shapes, but needs to be a certain area. Below are his different plans for his backyard. He wants his backyard to have the smallest perimeter possible to save money on fencing. Which backyard option should he use? Since all of the squares are one foot, we can count and see that all of the backyard options have an area of six square feet. So let's find the perimeter of each of the garden plots by counting around the shapes. Okay, now that the perimeters have been found, we need to locate the smallest perimeter. Backyard option A has the smallest perimeter with 10 feet. So, Walter should choose backyard option A. What a great job exploring the area and perimeter of shapes. You refreshed your skills on finding the perimeter by adding up all the sides, and you also used multiplication to find the area. You were able to compare perimeter and area and find that some shapes have the same area but not the same perimeter. And also that some shapes which have the same perimeter may not have the same area. It was so fun discovering that. I'm excited to explore more math in the next lesson with you.